Hi again, people! Welcome to another edition of Willis Garage. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the GRBL configuration on the Arduino and how you can change the values and uh, what the values means. I have gotten my information from the internet uh, and uh, I'm no expert at this at all. So if I get anything wrong, please let me know in the comments. For the configuration of my GRBL code, I used a link on the github.com. I will leave this link in the description so you can uh, read it yourself. Uh, it's, it's a very good uh, article. And everything uh, you need, uh, need is listed up here. But anyway, let's get going. I start by starting the universal G-code sender. I open my COM port for the Arduino. And I check to see if my machine is connected. And uh, it is connected. To get your uh, configuration file up, you type in two dollar signs in the command line and then press enter. Then you get the list of uh, all your settings. Let's say I want to change the dollar zero to another value. To change it, I just copy this up on in the command line. So you type in this and the value you want to change it to. Let's say I want to change it to the value of 30. I press enter. And then the next time you type in two dollar signs, you can see that this, the dollar sign zero is changed to 30. So that's how we change a value. I will change it back to 10, as it was before. Like so. Here you can see again that it has changed to 10. First, I just want to go through every one of these points and um, tell you what they do in the GRBL code. I will list them up fast uh, and uh, focus on a couple of these points that we need to configure the CNC machine. The dollar sign zero is step pulse in microseconds. This controls the length of the step pulse. The dollar sign one is the step idle delay in milliseconds. This means that every time your stepper completes a motion, the GRBL will disabling the steppers by this value in milliseconds. The dollar sign two is the step port invert mask. This is a setting most users won't need, but it can be useful in certain CNC stepper drivers that have peculiar requirements. The next is the dollar sign three. Here you can invert every one of your axes. There is a list on the, the link, uh, the github.com link in the description, uh, where you can see what kind of axis you invert by changing the value on the dollar sign three. I have put it to, to the value of six. This means that I'm inverting my Y axis and my Z axis. The dollar sign four is the step enable invert. This is for a stepper motor in enable pin. Uh, it's normal that it's high to disable and low to enable. But if you somehow need it to be the other way, you can change this value. The dollar sign five value is the limit pin invert. This is just the function of your uh, limit switches. I will come back to this in a later video. The dollar sign six is the probe pin invert. This is the same but for the probe pin if you use that on your machine. I will go to the next dollar sign ten. Status report. This setting uh, determines what GRBL real-time data is reported back to its user. I will leave this as it was. Then we get to the dollar sign 11. There's a junction deviation in millimeters and the same at the dollar sign 12 is the arc tolerance in millimeters. 
These two settings are important if you want to change the way your CNC machine behaves in a junction or a bend or an arc. Next is the dollar sign 13. You can enable this if you want your CNC machine to report back in inches instead of millimeters. Next, the dollar sign 20 is for the soft limits. This is a feature to help your machine not to travel too far. So you can input some soft limits or virtual limits that prohibits the machine to travel. Okay, next is the dollar sign 21. This is hard limits if you are using limit switches in the end of the, your axis. I have not gotten this far on my CNC machine, so I will leave this as it is. The dollar sign 22 is a setting for the homing cycle. This is if you have uh, limit switches installed. The dollar sign 23 is also for the homing uh, cycle. This is the uh, invert on the direction. The do dollar sign 24 is also homing cycle. It's the feed rate. The dollar sign 25 is also for the homing cycle. It is the homing seek rate. The dollar sign 26 is also for the homing cycle. The dollar sign 27 is also for the homing cycle. It's the pull off distance in millimeters. The dollar sign 30 is for setting max spindle speed in revolutions per minute. The dollar sign 31 is the minimum spindle speed in revolutions per minute. The dollar sign 32 is to enable the laser mode. This is if you have a CNC machine with a laser instead of a spindle. And now we come to the important ones for your machine in the beginning. We have the dollar sign 100, 101, 102. These are for the X, Y and Z axis and it's the steps per millimeter. This is why you need to calculate your machine's step per millimeter and calculate from uh, your stepper motors, which has a step per revolution. So these uh, settings are very important for your CNC machine to travel 10 centimeters if your G-code requests 10 centimeters. The dollar sign 110, 111, 112 is the max rate in uh, millimeters per minute. This is if the G-code requests uh, max or rapid travel, this is the max feed, feed rate. Then you have the dollar sign 120, 121, 122. This is the acceleration in millimeter per second square. This is how fast your axis accelerates when it gets a request to move. These settings you can play around with. The last setting is the max travel for the X, Y and Z axis in millimeters. This is only functional if you have the soft limits feature enabled. I will now start uh, trying to explain how I configured my machine. As you can see, I have configured my machine to 100 steps per millimeter on all the axes. I have my stepper drivers on a half turn and I have calculated that to travel one millimeter, my stepper motors needs 100 steps. And you can check that out. Let's take up my CNC machine here. I have the spindle on uh, the 40 millimeter mark on a ruler. And now I'm going to ask the Y axis to move 20 centimeters or 200 millimeters. <laughs> And as you can see, it stopped on the 20 millimeter mark. Uh, so it, it has moved 20 millimeters from 40. Now I'm going to ask the Y axis to move 10 centimeters. And as you can see, it traveled 10 centimeters. Let's say that you install the Arduino and the GRBL code and your step drivers is out of whack. I'm going to type in a step length of 250 steps per millimeter 
on the y-axis. And now I'm going to ask it to move one centimeter or 10 millimeters. As you can see, it moved uh, a lot further. It moved uh, approximately two and a half centimeters. So let's take it back. Now I'm going to ask it to move five centimeters. And it uh, moved uh, a lot further, it moved uh, 12 and a half. I'm going to take it back. Yeah, as you see, these settings are very important to get your machine to run properly. If you don't have your lead screw pitch angle or your belt pulley pitch angle, you can figure out by measuring how much steps it needs per millimeter. I'm going to try to explain. You know how many steps your stepper needs per revolution. For example, my stepper motors are 400 steps per revolution and I set the stepper drivers to a half a step. That means it has 800 steps per revolution. So if you then go into your settings and input 800 steps per millimeters press enter you can now send your axis one millimeter and then you know the stepper motors should run one revolution and then you can measure the millimeters it runs in uh, real life let's just uh, see that uh, the stepper motor turns one revolution This is the y-axis stepper motor, now I will send uh, a g-code of 1 millimeter and it should turn 1 revolution. And then you can measure. Now the y-axis should move 8 millimeters because I know my lead screws have a pitch of 8 millimeters. As you can see, that is correct. And now you can calculate your steps per millimeter because you know you are sending 800 steps to your stepper motor and it turns one revolution and you know your y-axis moves 8 millimeters. Then you can calculate this by taking 800 steps divided by 8 millimeters and you should get something like 100 steps per millimeter. That's why I have the setting on 100 steps per millimeter. I'll input that again, 100. And now by sending one millimeter to the y-axis, it should move one millimeter. As you can see, that is correct. Now let's try 20 centimeters. And uh, back. And that's how we verify that you have the correct settings. And this method you can use even if you don't know your pulley belt or lead screws pitch or how much revolution it needs to move one millimeter. Now let's check out the other settings. We have the 110, 111 and 112. These are max rate in millimeter per minute. Let's try to change the y-axis max rate to 3500. That's uh, quite a lot. And let's try to move it 100 millimeters. Wow. 
As you saw, it uh, moved 100 millimeters, and but it moved quite a lot faster. Let's try to change this to 4,500, 100 millimeters, and back. Let's try to move it 200 millimeters. Yeah, as you can see, it went quite good. I have it at 2000 because I want to make sure the steppers don't lose any steps. But of course, I might want to change these settings later so the machine can go smoother and faster. The next setting uh, we are going to look at is the acceleration setting. This is the millimeter per second square. Let's change this to 100 and let's try to send 100 millimeters to the y-axis. As you heard, the uh, acceleration was a little bit faster. Now let's try to put it at 200. As you can hear, the acceleration and the stopping is affected by this setting. This is also something you can play around with. You can try to find your maximum setting where the stepper motor stalls and then uh, retract this, the value about 20% and that should be good. But for now I have mine at 50, just to make sure nothing is lost. Uh, I'm going to change these settings also later. There you have it uh, folks, that's how I configured my CNC machine. In the link I have in the description for github.com you have a much more uh, detailed instruction. But I hope my video will help you to start your configuration process. And remember these settings are not dangerous to play with, just uh, try a little bit but be sure to get them right before you start carving because uh, if not everything will go to sh**. <laughs> so anyhow thanks for watching i appreciate it if you have any questions please let me know in the comments or on my facebook page or on my web page on my web page i also have uh, some diagrams and uh, pictures you can look at and on my facebook page i always put out some behind the scenes material for you to see thanks again for watching like subscribe dislike See you later.